to praise you enough for the Lord Jesus Christ and all that you've given to us through him. And so, Father, we pray this morning that his name and his way would be done in the service, that every heart would be touched, lives would be changed, destinies would be overturned. And, Father, we never tire praying this prayer. Lord, help us get this job done. Even so, Lord Jesus, we bid thee come. And, Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to Family Day uh, service here uh, at uh, my wife and I's home. And so we welcome you in Jesus' name. Aren't you grateful for the weather? Perfect, perfect weather. Uh, if you've been were watching the weather, it was indicating rain, you know, for a long time. Then when time came, the rain, of course, dissipated for us. And so we welcome you. And anyone visiting uh, here today, we, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We're so honored and thrilled to have you with us. And also we have a multitude of people watching live stream. And so uh, you're wondering, why does this pre preacher have a silly hat on and not wearing a tie? Well, we're outside and we're having a family day here and it's sort of like a picnic, but we are going to honor God by our gifts of worship, our gifts of giving, and of course, hearing of the Word of God. And we're, we're just thrilled and excited that we'll have a water baptism as well. And of course, the kids have a bouncer. And uh, of course, the greatest thing in the mix is you all loving each other and fellowshipping. So we, we welcome you and we, we greet each and every one of you in the, in the name of Jesus. What we're going to do is go ahead like we do in our service. We're going to go ahead and receive an offering. And so, uh, of course, I can't refer to the overhead screen, but most of us already know how we're going to give, whether it's by check, cash, uh, PayPal, church app, uh, text to give. And so, we, we trust that everyone's already uh, prepared their offering. And so um, I'm going to use as an offering scripture, 1 Corinthians 16.2. And it reads this, and it has to do with the offering. And it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And so this is uh, apostolic instructions concerning the offering. You know, a lot of people have problems with the offering, but if they read the Bible, we see that here the Apostle Paul, by divine inspiration, is telling the church, now this is how you take up an offering in church. And so uh, when we take up an offering, we're simply obeying the Bible. And uh, a lot of interesting components in here. Uh, first of all, it says in the first day of the week. What is the first day of the week? On what? Sunday. So we're obeying that in the first day of the week. I, I know in the Old Testament they uh, celebrate worship on the Sabbath or our Saturday, and some folks would contest, hey, you know, we still had to meet on Saturday. Well, the Bible says this each day is the Lord's. And so if you want to worship on Saturday, I mean, if your thing is Thursday morning at 5 30 in the morning, and that's when you have in church, Thank God, do it unto the Lord. But we like to follow the Bible here on the first of the week uh, and talks about when we have come together. And so let's look at some components that the apostle says about when we gather together. Uh, the next thing it says, let every one of you. And so this is an instruction for everyone. And so when it comes to offering, this is something everyone can get involved in. And notice it says this, lay him in store or set aside as God prospered him. I don't know about you, but I see the the uh, the principle of tithing there. You know, we understand tithe is ten percent, uh, and so whenever we receive income, we set aside our tithe. And when it says here, lay it in store, you just keep it aside until when you gather together to bring it unto the Lord. And and it says this, and this is very interesting, and this is a, a good. Uh, scriptural way to handle offering that there be no gatherings when I come. Now, what's that mean? What he's saying is when you're passing the offering bucket, that's not the time to decide, oh yeah, the offering, let's see what I have. No, the, the best way of honoring the Lord is before you even come to church. That, uh, hey, this is my tithe or I'm given this offering. 
I set it aside. I have it all written out. And what, what I like to do very often is I worship God with it. I worship with God. I, I pray over my offering at home. I honor God with it. And so I then I just simply bring it to church. And so this is good scriptural premise for the offering. And uh, I'm sure that every one of you do exactly like this. But uh, if not, I, I would encourage you to, to follow this and to lay a store what you're going to bring and, and pray over it. Uh, confess over it, and honor God with it. Amen. So let's go ahead and let's pray over the offering. Father, we're just so honored and delighted to be here. Thank you for the beautiful weather. and Thank you for these beautiful, beautiful people. And Father, as we give of our tithes and of our offerings, we thank you that all the promises of God are yes and amen. Father, that the storehouses of heaven are open to us. As we give, it's given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And Father, that we are blessed to be a blessing. And Father, we'll get this job done in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Go ahead, if we can have our servers uh, come forward, receive the offering. Thank you very, very much. And for those of you joining us live stream, this is Family Day. Uh, up at uh, my wife and I house and uh, we've got some wonderful precious people here we wish you were here but uh, you got the second best thing now there's only one problem with you watching online we're going to have some delicious food that you're just not going to partake of and so how many know it's more profitable to be in person <laughs> amen so and again as people are coming in we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Well, uh, of course, our service time started an hour later because we want to have, uh, you know, lunch about the noon hour. And so you're looking at the clock in the service. That means my preaching time must be abbreviated. You know, worship was abbreviated. Worship team was abbreviated. Announcements was abbreviated. And so it stands the reason that my sermon should be abbreviated. So I'm going to start off by saying I am fixing the clothes. <laughs> and you know what that means. Absolutely nothing. But we do believe in miracles, the working of miracles. And so we, we want to get everything that God has for us. So if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. For those of you watching online, normally we have the scriptures on the overhead screen and on your screen, but uh, because we're outside, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. And so if you're here, you don't have a Bible uh, or an e-device, uh, just listen intently to what we read on in the Word of God. And uh, John 13, verses 34 and 35, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Of course, here we read uh, the, what was called the Great Commandment. What is the Great Commandment? Uh, it's the only commandment that Jesus gave us, that we are to love one another. We understand in the Old Testament there were many commandments. There were chapters and chapters of commandments and rules and laws. And um, in the Old Testament, they had to do their best to follow all those chapters and all those verses. Uh, but the, mainly, all the Old Testament commandments were, were summed up in what is commonly referred to as the Ten Commandments. And so if you were a Jew on the Old Testament, that you did your best to follow the Ten Commandments. Well, we're in the New Testament. Jesus shed his blood. We don't need to offer sacrifices like the, uh, the saints in the Old Testament did because uh, by the shedding of blood, Jesus' blood, we have an eternal redemption. And so we don't have a whole lot of chapters and verses of thou shalt not, so thou shalt. Uh, Jesus just gives us one commandment to follow. Aren't you glad? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad that we don't need to offer up our pets every time we sin. You know, slain them into forgiveness of sins, you know, and so forth. But uh, Jesus said this, you know, I, my blood was shed. I just ask you one thing. I give you one commandment as my followers, that you love one another. And so that's all we need to be focusing on is loving one another. Now, I, I always bring this out, and I'm just so thrilled 
that Jesus didn't just say, now I want you to love one another and go on to another subject. He put a little phrase in there. He said, I want you to love one another is what? I have loved you. So, so Jesus is the standard of which we love by that we are trying to emulate. We are trying to follow his pattern as he loved us, as we were a recipient of his love and he loved us to death. He went to hell in our place. He went to that cross in our place and uh, he, he wants us to love one another with and uh, you know the Bible has a lot to say about this uh, commandment and really if that's all churches would teach on all year for every year that they, they would be right because that's the one thing and really if you walk in love you fulfill all the other instructions in the Bible yeah. and actually the Bible says that love is the fulfillment of the law now what does that mean well if you look at the Ten Commandments if you walk in love, you'll not violate one of the commandments. You know, you like the first one, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. Well, if you love God, you're not going to serve some other God. Uh, then you go down, thou shalt not steal. Well, if you love people, you're not going to steal from them. You know, and believe it or not, if you love someone, you're not going to kill them either. You know, so, so that single commandment fulfills all the commandments. And so if, if we just focus on, I'm going to love people just as Jesus loved me, how many know that our obedience is complete? And again, the Bible has a lot to say about the commandment. I am just want to read real quick James 2.12. Not necessarily turn there unless you're real quick on your e-device. It says this, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now, what is the law of liberty? Well, if you read in context, it is the law of love, because in the previous verses, they're talking about loving one another. The, the law of love is the law of liberty. And notice what it says, that uh, whatever we speak ought to be in the law of love. That means everything that comes out of our mouth ought to be governed by the love of God. When I speak to you, speak about you, the love of God ought to govern my lips. Everything I do, action, you know, for you, uh, with you, or by myself, it ought to be governed. And so, again, the law of love ought to be the center point of our Christianity. But uh, also, it says here that uh, not only our speaking are doing, but we are actually going to be judged of how well we follow the law of love. It says that we shall be judged by the law of liberty. Judged? I thought Jesus took care of all judgment. Well, if you study the Bible, there are still judgments. I mean, you know, the Bible says we are to judge ourselves. And really, this is the, the primary area that we are to judge ourselves. Am I walking in love? Am I speaking love? Am I doing love? Is this love? How does this affect another person? And again, everything we say and we do, we ought to be judging it. Our self-judgment by the law of love. But, but also, we know this, that one day, you know, Jesus is going to come or we're going to meet a natural death. And if we're a Christian, we're going to stand before Jesus and give an account of our life on earth. And guess what's going to be on that test? Do you, do you think it'd be some other thing than he told us to do? No. The number one thing, he, he's going to look at our works and judge them. Did we walk in love? Did we speak in love? Now, that judgment, you know, people get afraid. It's not a judgment, it's not a judgment whether you get in heaven or not. It's a judgment whether he can reward you. And so the more, and I really wish we had some time to look at this, the more we walk in love, do love deeds, love actions, the more blessed we'll be on the earth and the more eternal rewards we will have in heaven. And so this, this, this love is vital. And of course, we teach a lot about faith. Jesus taught about faith. Um, we receive most everything by faith. You know, Jesus tells us what's everything you desire when you pray, what? Believe that you receive them, you shall have them. What is that? That's faith. And so that's how we receive from God. We receive blessing from God. And we know faith is important. When Jesus ministered, he said, well, I find faith on the earth. Uh, he tell people that want healing, do you believe that I'm able to do this? So faith was this central component in receiving blessing from heaven. But the Bible says something very interesting in Galatians 5, 6, that in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything or uncircumcision, 
but faith that worketh by love. And so we know faith is important. If we need something by God, we got to exercise faith. But you know how that faith works? It works by love. That means simply if we're not walking in love, we're not treating people right, we're not speaking right. I mean, you know, you know there's a lot of places where it says your prayers will be hindered. Now, again, it's not God up there and saying, man, I'm mad at you, you're not walking in love. No, it, it's sort of like if you know anything about electricity, you can have electricity in the house. But if a breaker goes off, no matter how many times you flip that light switch on, there, no electricity will go there. You, you have to switch the breaker, get the breaker back on. When I grew up, some of you more mature people would remember this, it was the little fuses. How many remember those little fuses? A few hands there. So whether you're newer generation, you know, a breaker, old generation fuse, and who knows, 50 years from now, they're going to say, breakers? What are them? So sort of like the A-Tracks, so they'll be outdated. So I'm looking forward to that technology. And so um, in order to get, like I said, electricity, you got to fix the breaker. Again, faith works by love. So all these things, all these things center around love. Now, there's something very interesting that Jesus said. And again, I'm introducing my subject. Uh, in John 13, 35, our, our main text, By this all men shall know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. And so he's telling us what this love is going to do. He said, by this, by you loving one another, all men shall know you're my disciples. That means how we walk in love really affects how we can win the world. By this. Jesus didn't say by your Bible knowledge. He said, no, by your love. You've got to understand this, that people don't know, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So, you know... You, don't get into the business of fighting people and say, bless God, turn or burn, bless God, repent, you know, and really attacking their sins and so forth. Jesus took care of the sin problem. What we need to do is, is offer the God of love to them and, uh, and have them see how we, we walk in love and our love actions towards them. And that, that's going to attract them because more and more we're, we live in a very dark and selfish world. And more and more people are, are, are being selfish then. But when you are a shining light of, of love in the workplace, love at school, love in your neighborhood. I, I'm sorry, I was thinking I was thinking of a dear old saint. You're faithful to come to church, but you go out and curse your neighbors <laughs> out there and, and curse them in her native language. Not in tongues, in her native language. <laughs> and I won't mention names. I says, I says sister... Sister, your job is to be a light to your neighborhood. Your job is to, you're not, you know, she's calling fire and brimstone. Well, you know, she, she, she got her, her objective messed up. And so how do you know that if we walk in love, our neighbors ought to know it? Yeah. Our coworkers ought to know it. Yeah. They, they ought to know that we're Christian, not by our t-shirts, not by our bumper stickers, not by our argument, but by our words and our actions. Yeah. People ought to be saying, Hey, there's something different about you. What's so different? Why can you be happy during this, this hard time? And that is a catalyst, an open door to what? To share Jesus with them. But uh, also in this verse, notice Jesus said that you love one another as I've loved you. You know, he's talking about the church. He's talking about fellow Christians. And uh, Jesus said that love first ought to be displayed in word and in deed, indeed, among our fellow brethren and sistren. And so whenever we gather, whenever we're around another Christian, this is a good practice ground. We ought to be practicing love, speaking love, and so we're working together, uh, being kind and being courteous and so forth. And, uh, you know, of course, enjoying a good time. And, and Jesus said, that, that's, that's where you practice. How I many you know when it comes to Christianity, you know, it's not just going to church. It's not just, you know, saying, you know, I, I, I know the Lord. But uh, our Christianity is practiced in our homes. Yeah. How you treat your spouse, how you treat your children, how you treat one another, how you handle business. You know, uh, that's where our Christianity first ought to be practiced. And word and deed, everything ought to be governed by love. But really, 
When he said to love one another, when he's talking about Christians, that ought to be pretty easy. You know, as we've been forgiven, you know, uh, it ought to be easy to forgive others. You know, uh, Jesus told a, um, a parable about a man who owned his boss like $10 million. And he didn't have any money to pay, and he forgave him. How many of you would like to have all that $10 million uh, erased? Better than that, how many would like it in the bank? Praise the Lord. But then this, this guy that was forgiven of an impossible debt to pay off for him, he finds his fellow servant that owed him 10 bucks, And he takes him by the neck and says, Give me what thou owest. And says, Oh, please, have mercy on me. And he wouldn't have mercy on him. And uh, Jesus tells the, the story that news got to the boss and the boss was angry and put that guy in prison. And what he's saying, that's the same thing when we have unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment to another fellow Christian. All of us, we're on our way to hell. All of us, you owed a debt that we could not pay. We need someone to wash our sins away. Jesus came, we're going to heaven, our past. Aren't you glad that we're not going to have a video screen and, and say this was your life and every sin, every shortcoming, every time you lost your temper, it's displayed in front of all. No, it's washed clean. And when you approach the throne room of God, He don't He doesn't even He doesn't just forgive it. He throws it away. It ceases to be. And so, as we've received of that love and forgiveness, we we ought to we ought to be giving that away. So, you know, and so no matter what someone does to us, uh, hurts us, gets us offended, so forth, that, hey, I've been forgiven. I have no rights, no grounds to have a complaint. And so that ought to be easy. You know, look at you guys. You're so beautiful. You come to church and it ought to be easy to love each other here, isn't it? But what I want to do in my fixing the clothes remainder of the time, that was my introduction, is... I want to look at the full spectrum of love. This is commandment of love. Because Jesus says, you're, you, you know, love one another. So he's talking about Christians. What about loving people that aren't Christians? What about loving even if they are Christians that aren't so lovable? I know you never had that problem. And so, but how many know Jesus didn't say, now you love one another, but man, if they, they rub you wrong, give them hell. You know, if you rub them wrong, let them have it. You know, start slamming doors and posting ugly posts on Facebook. You know, we're to love one another as, as Christ loved us. So, I, I want to look at this. So, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And I, I know we got uh, sun beating down uh, on people. So, uh, I guess I'm going to have to keep it short. All right. Praise the Lord. But let, let's, let's get something. Let's get something out of this. It says this, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children your Father which is in heaven, who maketh his Son to rise on the evil and, the, and on the good. He sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. If you love them that love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the sinners do the same. If you salute or greet your brethren only uh, more than others, do not even the, the, the publicans or sinners do. Therefore be perfect, even your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And so right here, Jesus addresses the other side of the spectrum. One time, first time we read, God love one another. They're not going to want to join your church unless you're loving each other. They're not going to want to know your God unless you're loving on each other. Then he talks about the other spectrum, and he dresses enemies. He, and he says, what do you do for your enemies? Well, you, you, you protest, you march, you storm the gates, you speak evil of them, you, you do rotten things to them. No. Jesus tells us, again, that commandment of love. That love that you, you'd be happy, smiling, praising people in church, that same love you love one another. Now, I want you to love the world with it. I want you, and he goes as far, as far to say, I want you to love your enemies with it. And so, really, it's the whole spectrum. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, someone ought to do a movie about that. 
that's a joke for those of you 40 and older. And so, and then Jesus says this, that you may be perfect like your Father which is in heaven, who causes his Son to, to rise on the just and the unjust. He sends rain on the good and evil. And this is an amazing revelation God wants us all to see, is God is good to everyone regardless of how they treat him. And see, the revelation here is how you treat your enemies is a reflection of who you are, yeah. not what they did to you. Come on. Yeah. And so when you get upset and you, you, you get angry and you do nasty things back to them, you're simply showing them what you're made of. And God says, no, there's, there's a higher place. Yeah. I, I, I'm good all the time. I treat people right because of who I am, not how they treat me. And that's what here he says is being perfect. And Jesus here talks about your enemies or the hard people. Do you, do, does anybody have any hard people to love? Well, you probably don't. So take notes and you probably have a neighbor or friend who does or a co-worker at least. And Jesus gives us three things. He says to love your enemies. And I love this about the teaching of Jesus. He just doesn't tell you blank statements. Now, love your enemies and go on to another subject. Just like love one another, he says, as I have loved you. So he says, I want you to love your enemies. And, uh, you know, we would probably excuse ourselves. Well, we, if I don't hit them, I'm doing okay. <laughs> no, he, he gives us three things of how to love unloving people. Three ways to respond in love to those that are against us. Aren't you glad Jesus gave it to us? Yes. These are marching orders. The first thing we are to do is we are to bless them that curse you. Yes. What does that mean? Well, here, curse means using words to say bad or hurtful things to you. That's a curse. How many have ever had someone say something bad to you or about you? Maybe it hurts your feelings. Maybe it may not have been true. Maybe it been true and you didn't want anyone else to know about it. And so what are we to do when someone says bad things about us or to us? What are we to do? Are we to say bad things about them? Our eye for an eye and the tooth for a tooth? No, Jesus said this that we are to bless those that curse us. In the book of Romans, and again, if it wasn't so much son, and so if I have you turn there, the Bible says don't be overcome by evil, overcome evil by good. Yeah. So when someone speaks ill about you or says something nasty about you, ruffles your feathers, that instead of returning fire, so to speak, the way you overcome that evil is you say something nice about them and that's you know bless is just the opposite of curse here so instead of using our words to get even to get back to to vent our anger at them no we use our words in love that we bless them that when they say something bad about us guess what comes out of our mouth we say something good about them how I many you know that's going to take some faith I mean, you know, that's going to take some love. But we know this, the love of Christ constrains us. Yes. The love of Christ is in us, and so it ought to be governing us. And so that's how we love, and we overcome anything that comes our way. Any, and this would be a good thing. You heard something, someone said something, you know, so-and-so said this, and you want to attempt, well, that lousy, no-good weasel. No, well, bless his darling heart. You know, he does have nice shoes, you know. That's my code. You know, Mama used to say, if you can't find anything nice to say about anyone, don't say it all. Well, the Bible says, when you can't find anything nice to say about someone, find something. And so, if anything, you just, your loss of words had that. You, you might want to use something else, but I use shoes. When I say, nice shoes, that's code. I'm blessing you for your cursing. So, you all got nice shoes here this morning. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So, Again, how many know the, the, this is how we obey the Lord? Every time we're cursed, 
we what? We bless. And there's a lot of things we could share, but I'm trying to keep it uh, short here. Second thing of how to love the unlovable, how to love your enemies, we are to do good to them that hate you. Good here means something useful or helpful. When someone doesn't like you, our natural tendency is what? Not to like them. You're lost, bucko. You know, you know, I don't need you, and so forth. Well, we're missing an opportunity to obey the Lord. Whatever you do in word or deed, we are to be governed by the law of love. And so, believe it or not, as wonderful and precious as you all are, there might be someone out there that just doesn't like you. And if you were to interview them, they probably have their reasons and Maybe out of the 10 things, maybe one or two just might be true and others are fabricated. Who knows? But it doesn't matter. Jesus didn't, didn't give us a loophole. Well, unless they do something, you know, real bad, you know, you got to love them. But if they do this real bad thing, then, then you're excused from this. No, he, he just leaves it wide open. If people hate you or people don't like you or people are, are upset with you, you know, for some reason. What does the Bible say to do? What does love do? You do good unto them. Do something kind. Do something useful. Now, probably the simplest and easiest ways is to give them money. Give them a gift. Well, bless God, they don't deserve it. Well, you don't deserve to go to heaven. Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Nothing we do in life should be, we should never, I never use that word, I deserve this. Yeah. Those, those are ugly words. Right. I deserve, I deserve. Uh -huh. right. No, I deserve to go to hell. I deserve yeah. eternal punishment. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> everything I have is because of the goodness yeah. of God. You, you know, someone ought to ought preach a sermon about the goodness and mercy of God. You know, last time I was there, you know, the Old Testament, praise the Lord for what? He is good. And the reason he's good, he's good to all. Good, bad, and ugly. He's good, and we're to be examples of our Father. So we're to do good. And so, and really when we do good to, to people that don't like us or are very offended or offensive, uh, the Bible talks about that a, a gift given will pacify their anger. It, it'll touch their heart, but also it'll keep your heart right. But it, 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 this is the way we overcome evil. I remember uh, when I went to Rama, my first year at Rama, I, I wanted to work at a gas station. And you may think, why would you want to do that? Because you, when you work at a gas station, all you do is sit behind the counter and take people's money and cash them out. But you have all this time to study. And so I, I, I found a, a perfect job near, near where my apartment was. And so I went to school from about 8 to noon. Then at one uh, 2 o'clock, I worked from 2 to midnight at the gas station and I just you know and it worked out well but I got to study and it was in the evening not too many customers most customers are during the day and so forth and it, it was a great gig and so it was for this certain company well after several months that company got bought by Texaco a well-known company much bigger and uh, and so of course the first thing they did is they got rid of the the foreman the boss and put in their boss now, their boss was a very harsh woman, very, very harsh, where the previous boss w was a very gracious guy, very, oh, accommodating. I mean, she was, I mean, she had something to prove. And, um, and so, you know, we have new management, you know, you're waving through new management. And, you know, I just said very sweetly, you know, I, I'm a Bible school student. They usually give you Sundays off. I, I'm hoping that we can continue that. You're going to work when I tell you you're going to work. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I could tell you stories. You know, uh, Raymond Bible Church has started, and on Easter Sunday, they were going to start their first membership. I was going to be a charter member of Raymond Bible Church. And I've always said Sunday, she made me work on Easter Sunday. 
And how many of you, you, you can get offended, hurt, and so forth? But how many of you, love always wins. Yeah. And just to, to show that she was very hard, every single person that worked in that company quit, except for me. Well, when you quit, you're a quitter. And, and that just shows what you're made of. You know what I did? I just smiled and says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make that woman love me. I, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to have her eaten out of her hand. And she brought in her friend was like the, you know, there's the Antichrist and the false prophet. And the false prophet emulated the Antichrist. She was the false prophet. And no one liked her and they quit. And man, she, she was a horrid woman. And I said, I'm going to have her eaten out of my hand. And so, no matter what they said, I, I did nice things. I went the extra mile and worked. And, you know, I did things beyond the call of duty. <coughs> and uh, after a few months, they began to call me my boy. Oh, that's my boy. And the, and they, they, the false prophet wanted to say, can my boy work with me? I want my boy to work with me. And they wanted me to be with them all the time. And at the end, they, they, just, they just fell in love with me and treated me like a son. What did I do? I could have got mad, upset. I could have quit. I could have turned railing to railing and so forth. But I overcame evil with good. And, uh, and just to, to show that it wasn't just in their estimation, that, uh, like the general overseer of Texaco came in and personally wanted me to go into Texaco and start supervising gas stations and work up the ladder. Of course, I turned it on. I was going to ministry. But because news got around. How did I do that? Simply by the law of love. Do good. Imagine, you know, instead of going on strike, imagine instead of telling your boss off and, and quitting, imagine what would happen if you actually obeyed the Lord and do good. What would, would happen? Well, my time is slipping away. Let's at least cover the third thing. Jesus said, so we are to bless those that curse us. We're to do good those that do bad to us. And three, we are to pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Yes, it's come down to that. Jesus actually tells us that we should pray for people. Wow. Not just pray for our family, not just pray for those of that are friends and our concerns. Here Jesus tells us that we are to pray for our enemies. And he gives us a description. Number one, we're to pray for them to despitefully use you. Despitefully use you means to mistreat you or take advantage of you. I'm not going to ask a show of hands. You know, uh, at, the, at that gas station, I was mistreated. You know, I was, I was taken advantage of. But how do you overcome? By good. And not only am I to say the right, I had to say the right things and do the right things, but here Jesus said we are to pray. You know, how many times people vent when they're mistreated? How many times that, that you know, someone said this and they're upset and, you know, they're violating the law of love. You know, when, when someone mistreats you or uh, takes advantage of you, the world shouldn't know that. No one should know that. Except you, when you walk in love, you go to your closet, you talk to God, and you pray for that person. Now, how do you pray? God, smite them all. Smite them with blindness. Smite them. No. We, we do have a good example. Love one another is what? I have loved you. On the cross, we know Jesus said, smite those despicable Jews that crucified me. Let them have it, Jesus. Let them have it, God. No, he said, Father, what? Forgive them. They know not what they do. How I many you know love, love will win? Love will keep your heart right. Love will, will amend offense, amend broken relationships. You know, when, whenever we, we, we don't do love, we simply put gasoline on the fire. But love will always win. So we are to pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute us. Of course, when people say bad things and do bad things because you're a Christian. Now, you know, there, I, I wish I had time to do this. You know, uh, according to the Bible, it ought to be a joy when someone 
uh, nags you, makes fun of you as a Christian. Jesus said that we ought to leap for joy. It said to the disciples that they, they praised God, they were worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. See, we, we live in a, a generation of victims. Oh, you know, you, you shouldn't persecute me, you shouldn't say anything about me. Oh, they hurt me, it's so hard to be a Christian. That's nonsense. You're a vic victor, not a victim. And then everyone makes fun of you being a Christian. You just smile real big and the Bible says leap for joy. Just jump a little bit and you say, thank you. Thank you. And Jesus said this, great will your reward be in heaven. See, love, love wins. Love wins no matter what anyone says. No matter what anyone does. And guess what? My iPad just said, you're done because it's too hot. It's shut down. Yes. See, you've been praying. God has answered your prayers. But uh, one commandment we have is to love one another. We, we are to love fellow Christians, but the full spectrum, we are to love everyone. We, anyone bless, who curses us, we bless them. Anything, anybody does something wrong to us, we give them gifts. If anyone uh, mistreats us or, or persecutes us, we pray for them. And Jesus said, that way you'll be just like your Father which said, He's good to everyone because of who He is, not because of who they, how they treat you, treated Him. And same thing, how you treat people that mistreat you shows who you are. If you're a good person, you treat them good regardless of how they treat you. So we trust you're helped. Ho hopefully you don't need to put this so much in practice here in loving one another, but when you go out here in the world, uh, be mindful of these words. Let's pray. Father, we're just so grateful and thankful for the privilege of, of hearing your word. Father, the great commandment of love. And Father, we're to love one another as you loved us. And Father, thank you so much for the commandment of love. And Lord, I trust that the love of God will constrain each and every one of us. And Father, that not only we're to love one another, but the world out there, that they may know that we are your disciples, that we may win them. Now, real quick, I know that we're in a home gathering uh, in most church folks, folks are here, but we have people watching online. Real quick, is there anybody you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life? You never accepted Christ into your heart? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you raise your hand, anybody here? Just going to take a moment, just scan to everyone. And we're anyone who never made Jesus the Lord of their life. Now, we have home folks. But if you're watching online, go ahead and raise your hand. I can't see your hand, but God can. Number two, maybe here you are a Christian, you have been born again, but you're what we call backslidden. The Bible calls a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter, which simply means this. I accepted Jesus, but I'm not living for him. I've walked away from him. My heart tells me that. I need to come back into fellowship with God. Is there anybody that say, that's me, I want to rededicate my life? Would you raise your hand again? When you raise your hand, we're not going to embarrass you. This is between you and God. Is there anybody? Well, we're here uh, at my place, and... It's, it's the faithful and the true, those that love God. But maybe you're watching and maybe you don't know Jesus. Or maybe you know him and you're not where you should be. Right now, call upon him. How do you call? Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive the salvation that Christ died for. I accept Jesus into my heart. A very simple and sincere prayer like that can change your life. And if you prayed that prayer, go ahead and contact us. Let us know. We want to help you get started in your new walk with God. Amen. Well, were you helped? Praise the Lord. And so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Scott. Uh, he's our MC of everything that's going on. And thank you for putting up with the sun beating down on you. And so praise the Lord. Go ahead, Pastor Scott. Praise God. So we're going to go ahead and dismiss you by table for lunch. Uh, go ahead.